Today on Dead Dodge Garage, budget cylinder head overhaul for dummies like me. This is a cylinder head. It's a very important piece of your engine. It does a lot of the heavy lifting. In your cylinder head, you have valves, intake valves that let air and gas in, and exhaust valves that let out the spent fuel. Nasty. Those valves are opened indirectly by the camshaft. Using a crazy system of lifter, pushrod, and rocker arm, with the lifter riding on these lobes. Until such a time as the camshaft, you know, the brain of the engine, wants the valve to be opened, it needs a spring to hold it shut. So these are the main important pieces of the head. The valve, the spring, and the little oil seal. There are also these keepers that hold it all together. Let's say you're doing a budget rebuild at home and you want to freshen your cylinder heads. The important part, oil seals. Um, with bad oil seals, you get smoking, especially on startup, and that's not ideal. You probably want to clean your cylinder heads. It's really hard to do that thoroughly with the valves and springs in the way. And there may even be other things you want to do, like mild cleanup porting, or lap your valves in for a fresh valve seal. These are all great ideas, but to do them, you need to break the head down. But how do you break the head down at home? Well, a couple options. You could use one of those giant clampy looking thingies that pushes on the valve face on that side and compresses the spring on this side so you can get the keepers out. Then you relax that thing, the spring expands, and there you go. I own three of those, but I can't find any of them, so that's inconvenient. So then we come to this, your standard run-of-the-mill drill press. Neat! It currently has one of those 3.8 socket drive adapters chucked in it, a couple extensions, and this the important magic piece. The important magic piece is a socket of appropriate size. In this case, a three quarter inch spark plug socket. It needs to match the retainer, roughly, you know, something like that. And it needs to have a big notch in it. The notch is used to extract the keepers after you've used this to compress the spring. This particular drill press was missing a very important part of this, a spindle lock. So I made one. Now I can crank this down and lock it and it'll stay put while I remove the keepers, which is great. I used to have a really, really ancient Sears drill press set up to do this. I kind of gave it away. So I had to make another one. When I had my business, you know, mechanicing and rebuilding engines, I actually had a seat and guide machine which was set up to do this. It was a little nicer. It had a big humongous platform here and you could, you know, stand the head up on it. It could also do seats and guides, but I literally never did that. You see, I'm not a machinist. I'm just some guy. Now, as you can see here, my springs and valves are in the order I took them out, and that'll be great. However, I need to clean them because they're really gross. And the drill press comes in handy for that, too. You can chuck your valve up in there, turn it on, ideally at a low speed, and clean it with a wire brush. That could also be a good opportunity to backface the valves. Remove that little raised lip there. You would use a file to accomplish that. I don't know if I'm gonna bother in this case. Now these particular cylinder heads are for this, a forged crank Marine 440. You can see there on that fancy new piston, it says 060. Yeah, 60 thou over, barely cleaned it up. However, this process is basically the same for any overhead valve setup. Eh, I'm sure there's some exceptions to that. The biggest problem is the angle of the valves. In these heads, I was able to take them down with no block at all, but in some cases, you'll have to block your head here. So this gets hmm, straight on angle of attack at the valve spring. I did this on the bench grinder. Worked really well. Took a little bit and almost burned my hand. While these heads are apart, I am gonna do some very, very basic cleanup porting. And I think I'm gonna block the exhaust crossover. Not even for performance necessarily, but to try and reduce the amount of boiling fuel. My big block has a pretty major problem with that, and I want to try and avoid it for this build. These heads are actually in really, really good shape. There was hardly any grime in here. More rust than anything. When this particular engine's finally finished, it's going in this, the toolbox charger. Look at this thing. It's a little different than when it started. Shiny new paint job that's mostly buff now. Brand new glass everywhere. Completely new interior and dash. It's way too nice. 
Oh yeah, new wiring too. Here's a look at this crazy contraption in operation. Oop. Center it up. This has to be set just so. Oh yeah, on the other head, I remember to do this, but not on this one. I usually take a hammer and a socket and beat every one of these just once or twice. It'll help shock the keepers loose. Otherwise, when you first try to compress this, they won't want to separate. Here's my handy magnet. Handy magnet. Sometimes this takes a little doing. Oh, on this head, the intake and exhaust keepers are different. So I'm keeping them separate. Sometimes there's some finagling involved. Sometimes you have to lift the valve back up. Sometimes you gotta shift this guy a little bit. Nice. There. And that is exhaust. And you loosen your spindle lock and carefully, carefully release it. There you go. Then you simply shift the head down and repeat the process. In my old setup, I had some little angled wedge wood block things that I would put under the valve to keep it from, you know, going down while you're trying to do this. Balled up paper towel works fine. If, like mine, your cheapo drill press doesn't have an adjustable spindle stop, make one. This is what was in there. It's an adjustable drag screw, which doesn't really make any sense. This is flat, but there's no way for it to turn into the groove. Anyway, this is a random bolt with a little pilot point on it, and it fits perfectly. Then I just use the vice grips, lock, unlock. So easy. Well, here's a check you can do for your valve guides. With your valves loose like this, pull the valve to about this point. Plug the top of the guide with your finger and pull. Should be vacuum. See that? It actually bounces back. That tells me it's close enough. You can repeat that for every single one. Some will have a little bit more suction than others, but all should have some, and they do. These heads were actually redone once already, so for the most part, they're okay. You just need a really good cleaning. Now grime is one problem in these heads. There's a good bit, but rust is actually an even bigger worry. You can see on this intake valve, there's a bit of a moisture intrusion issue. I'm gonna clean all that up. And again, these valves are gonna get lapped in, so they have a nice fresh seal. For science, before I broke these heads down, I did a leakage test. The valves with marks on them leaked quite badly. And this was one. And I'm sure that's down to all this moisture. Little bits of rust and crud and horror in the valve seat there, preventing this from closing all the way and allowing leakage. That leakage, when this thing is running, is compression, and compression is power, so you don't want that. It's entirely possible that these little bits of grime would have magically cleaned themselves as soon as the engine ran, but, you know, we're trying to make a few horsepowers here, so we really don't want to rely on magic. Oh yeah, great opportunity to clean out the cooling ports on your heads too. Yuck. Fresh out of the solvent tank, we'll use apprentice levels of brake clean, and compressed air to get the solvent off and the head as clean as possible. It's like a hot tank, but much, much worse. Of course, the right tool to do this with, die grinder, but I never seem to have one. Drill works. Here's my trick for blocking the crossovers. Using one of those carbides, cut a bevel, make a little plate that fits in there, fit the plate in there, weld the perimeter, grind it flat, and you're done. And while I've got the carbide here, I'm gonna do the most basic of cleanups. Just take this ugliness down, knock that down a little, smooth this, nothing crazy.
All right, that's getting places. Took that ugly ridge out of there and just kind of smoothing everything. There's more to do here, but yeah. I won't really touch this side. Yeah. You could port match this to the gasket and the header, but that's probably too much work. Frankly, all of this is too much work, but it can make a bit of a difference. Now I just have seven more to do. Anywho, enough about head porting. This is not a video about head porting. This is a video about rebuilding a set of cylinder heads with a drill press. And on that note, back at the drill press, you can actually use it as a drill press. Here are all the valves for one of the cylinder heads. I chucked every one of these up in the drill press, which is fine, as long as you do it carefully. Don't, you know, scar up the stems. And I cleaned them, first with a wire brush, then with some 40 grit sandpaper, and then some 220 grit sandpaper. And they look like this. Don't mind the rust pits. That's, you know, not a big problem. At least I don't think. Here's the set I haven't done yet. Ugh. It really is as simple as just sticking it in here and hung it up the chuck, running it, brushing off the big chunks. Now, obviously, the ceiling surface there still needs some work. I didn't touch that. To redo the ceiling surface of the valve and the seat at the same time, we're going to use something called lapping compound. Lapping compound is kind of like liquid sandpaper. You put it on there, and then you spin the valve, and the two surfaces kind of machine each other. You end up with a nice shiny ring on both. You're doing good. I don't have any right now, so I can't really show you that. But all you need is a power drill, your valve, some oil in there on the valve stem in the guide, and your lapping compound here. You want to take care not to let the lapping compound get into the guide. That could do bad things. And then you run the drill, and you pull it back into the seat. And when there's compound on there, you'll hear it going. And you just keep doing that. Do it both directions for an amount of time. Your mileage will vary by how nasty your valves are. Now again, take care not to reef these super tight in your drill. You don't want to leave any marks behind. This probably goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. As you're lapping the valves in, you need to keep them in the position that you lapped them. So lay them out in order like this on a table. And when you assemble the head, assemble them in that order. Keep everything nice and neat. Obviously, you could lap that valve and it's fine in that seat, but if you flip it to that one, well, it might not be fine anymore, so you don't want that. Now, again, what you'll be looking for is a nice line, kind of like you can see on this valve now. They'll be in varying thicknesses, but it should be consistent all the way around. No dark spots through your line. should look nice. And you should have the same on your valve seat. Man, this porting looks like crap. Anyway, the world is my editing studio. If you can't get a nice consistent line on your valve and valve seat, it's time for a trip to the machine shop. Ditto if your guides are worn out. Ditto if any of this didn't make sense. Then it's time to assemble your heads with new valve seals, ideally. These were actually rebuilt not too many hours ago, and it has those nifty positive seals on the intake side, which I'm probably just going to leave alone. But I think I'll replace these exhaust valve seals. Yeah, why not? Yeah, that's pretty much it. A lot of elbow grease, attention to a couple choice things, and time. Also a horrible mess, as with every other process. If you want to know more about porting cylinder heads, I don't know, go watch Uncle Tony's video on the subject. Or like, literally anyone else, because I'm not really the guy for that. I've done it a few times with success, I guess. I did these heads, and they haven't exploded yet, so that's pretty good. Hopefully this will all be done soon, and these heads can go back on this engine. 
It's supposed to be running in like a week, so I'm sure that's gonna happen. And that's all I got. Yeah. So thank you very much for watching. And good luck out there.